Hi, I'm Richard Atkinson. In this video, I will explain some of the incredibly interwoven counterpoint from the third movement of Mahler's Ninth Symphony, entitled Rondo Burlesque. He inscribed on its manuscript the cryptic dedication to my brothers in Apollo, which some believe was directed toward critics who found his contrapuntal skill lacking, while others believe it to be a dedication to all the great musical craftsmen and polyphonists who preceded him, most notably J.S. Bach. It is evident from early on in the movement that Mahler intends to pull out all contrapuntal stops and flaunt his prowess. After the opening salvo that you heard at the beginning of this video, the first theme appears in the violins. The texture becomes increasingly dense until a passage of invertible counterpoint appears. Invertible counterpoint is when contrapuntal lines are interchangeable between voices of different registers, or in this case, instruments. Here, the second violin plays the familiar first theme, while the trombones and tuba play a new subject. and the woodwinds simultaneously play a third subject. Which later appears in other forms, but always concluding with Now listen to the passage and watch how the three subjects interact. Later in the movement, a new fugal passage begins with a fourth subject entering in the clarinets and also as a more decorated version of itself in the second violins. This passage also features a variation on subject two, and as has been the case all along, additional contrapuntal lines that I'm not even mentioning. crowning moment of complexity occurs when this fifth subject makes its first appearance in the first violins and oboes. We're going to take a short detour to further explain this fifth subject. Notice it's composed of two dissonant leaps, a tritone down and then a major ninth up. A consonant diatonic version of this same subject becomes the principal material for the slow middle section of the movement, primarily heard by the solo trumpet. As this calm middle section transitions back to the stormy opening material, we twice hear the dissonant version of the fifth subject this time in the clarinets, including the E-flat clarinet, which Mahler often employs in humorous or sarcastic moments.
we're going to extend our detour all the way to the fourth movement adagio, in which the four-note turn motif, a fragment of subject five, is ubiquitous. However, twice in the movement, the full dissonant version of subject five appears, both times surprisingly in sublime, transfigured passages. The first time, it appears in the second violins in one of the great climaxes of the movement. The second time, it appears in the cellos and basses as the first violin ascends in a glorious glissando to a high A-flat. The detour is finished, so now we go back to the point in the Rondo Burlesque when the fifth subject first appears as part of the invertible counterpoint. Watch for when the fifth subject combines with itself in stretto. Stretto is the Italian word for squeezed, which in counterpoint terminology just means the entries of the subjects are squeezed together such that the second enters before the first has finished. In this passage, it occurs between the winds and the strings. Now listen to the whole passage, beginning with a statement of subject four, played fortissimo by the horns. I'm done with my explanation of the counterpoint, so I'll finish the video with the closing bars of the Rondo Burlesque. I'll start a few measures before the presto marking, because this includes my favorite percussion moment, when the snare drum has what I think is its only note in the symphony, a hilarious rolled whole note. The frenzied presto passage then concludes this whirlwind of a movement. <laughs> 